Hi there, it's Carol with Carol B. Crafts. Today we'll be making this beautiful um, happy birthday card. And this is project number four in my Your Inspiring Flying Home online class. Now the Your Inspiring and Flying Home online class kit will be available through April 30th, 2018. The stamp set that we'll be using or st stamp sets will be will use happy birthday for the inside sentiment and for this card and then we'll be using this um, bouquet with a little birdhouse and so that's this stamp right here now if you haven't gotten my class kit yet uh, it includes six cards and one bonus project and it you can get it absolutely free with a sixty dollar retail purchase that's before shipping and tax at stampinup.com using the current host code on my website www.carolbcrafts.com so check it out so that you can make these cards along with us but if you don't have the card kit don't worry I'll give you the dimensions and I'll put them on my website just search flying home or your inspiring so let's start making our card this is the card kit that you'll need. Um, so we'll go ahead and get everything out that we have in here. Everything is pre-cut and pre-scored. Now I always put your embellishments in the envelope and we do have some really sweet embellishments. We have this leaf pattern from the Petal Passions embellishment. I think those are really nice. I like those a lot. And then we have this metal rimmed pearl. It's one of the smallest pearls in the metal rimmed pearls set of embellishments and then we have this delicate white doily and so we'll set our envelope aside we also have a piece of 10 inch white organza ribbon that's real popular right now and then we of course we have our card base and uh, then we have a rat rich razzleberry it's four by five and a quarter. Then on top of that, we'll have a piece of Whisper White, three and one eighths by five and a quarter. Then we'll have a piece of our DSP. And this is the, this comes from the Sweet Soiree um, DSP. And it is uh, three by five and a quarter. Then for the inside sentiment, we have a piece of rich razzleberry, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then we have two pieces of whisper white for you only need one, and they are three by four for the inside sentiment. Now for the little bird um, and the, the scallop circle, this is rich razzleberry. It is the largest scallop circle and the layering circles framelits and then these two pieces of whisper white thick whisper white are from the second largest um, layer circle in the layering circles framelits so I wanted to stress that it is important that you use the thick whisper white for the circles because we will be doing some uh, water coloring here uh, with our watercolor pencils. So those pencils that you'll need for the water coloring, there's eight colors of the 13. And this is a really good value for coloring. If you want to just um, use color pencils, this is a good, good way to be economical. So the colors that we'll need is Old Olive, Rich Razzleberry, Early Espresso, Basic Black, Daffodil Delight, uh, Pacific Point, Basic Gray, and Calypso Coral. And this again will all be on my um, website uh, underneath the video for this card. We'll need a piece of paper towel to wipe our aqua painter brush, a little bit of water, and if you'll probably you may need a sharpener if your pencils get a little dull okay I think we're ready to go ahead and get started we'll do our coloring first and our stamping 
So we'll need these two pieces here and these two pieces here. Everything else we can put aside for now. Just be sure not to lose your little embellishments. Now you will need your stamp a jig for our stamping because you'll need to place your stamp um, on the circle. So I'll get my snail out and put some snail on the edges of the circles to keep them in place. I give you two, you only need the one just in case. And this this large stamp here, it it really will not fit on a D block that well. I don't even think it will. So you'll need an E block if you use this stamp set flying home. Or also the um, you're inspiring you'll also need it for that one as well okay so we're going to use memento ink and we'll go ahead and ink this up and I like to rub it a little bit and tap it rub and tap rub and tap get it good and inked up and once we get it inked up, we'll make our image here in the corner. And this way we can place it perfectly on our circle where we want it. Move this aside. So it's best to just uh, look at your flowers and make sure that they are about the same distance away from the edge of the circle. And then kind of make sure you're birdhouse at the bottom is kind of straight and that looks about right right there so I'll, I'll go ahead and ink up my stamp again oops uh, and I'm sure you never have a oops moment like that <laughs> do you I'm I do all the time so these big blocks are they're kind of hard to hang on to but they do the job, so that's good. All right, so I have have it good and inked up. My stamp on my jig still in place. I'm going to go straight down, give it a little help, put that back in place, and then straight up. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what we'll do is, if you want to go ahead and do the other one. Um, that would be a good time to do it in case you mess up and you want to do another one. Okay, so we have our uh, cleaned off our stamp and our um, plastic for our uh, stamp of a jig. So now we're going to go ahead and put do the sentiment um, inside sentiment, and I'm going to put this along one of these lines at the bottom, match it up, and the reason I do that is because. Well, hopefully I will do that. <laughs> the reason I do that is because I'm going to bring in this piece of uh, rich razzleberry that's going to go underneath the sentiment. I'm going to use that right now to help me put my sentiment stamp on straight. And I'm going to be using Happy Birthday. But you could do the Happy Mother's Day or you could even do Happy Easter if you wanted to. I thought this was... A beautiful birthday card though so we'll ink up our stamp and stamp the image on our plastic so what I'm going to use this for is I pretty much know I want my happy birthday about right here it's about one and a quarter inches from the top so I know that this matches on the line here and here so it's straight across and that will help me to put my happy birthday straight across. I'll just put those two fingers down and pull this out. Put this in place. Remove this and put my ink my stamp up again. And then I'm going to go straight down and straight up. And I have my happy birthday. Now before I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bird here. So I'll get my 
Stampamajig. I'm just going to leave the happy birthday there for now. I have the little bird with the feet. I'm going to ink that up and make an image. And then I'm going to use that image to place my bird about right there, above top right of the happy birthday. Ink up my stamp again. Make sure none of my edges have ink on them because that will mess up my, um, and I see I have some there, so I'm going to clean that off. So you have to, when you put your ink on your, you have to make sure your stamp is completely level so that you don't get any on the edge. And now, now I need to do my little birdie. I have my image of my bird on my stamp -a -jig. And I want it about right there. So get a little bit more ink on and go straight down and straight up. Now my little bird. So we're going to start coloring and um, I put the lid on my ink and be sure you wipe your hands after you touch your ink because it's very easy to get ink on your fingers from that lid. While we have our little bird out, we'll go ahead and get um, our image, image ready to color. Now this is our water and if you haven't used your brush in a day or so, it's going to be all fanned out like that. So what we need to do to prime it, to get it ready, is to get some paper towel. I think I'll put my paper towel up at the top here. It's kind of out of the way that way. There we go. So you're going to get your brush really, really, not really, really wet, but you want all the bristles wet. And then you're going to take your paper towel and you're just going to do like this, dry your brush off. You're not wanting to get your brush wet. Now there's no water in the brush. I don't use the water in the brush. I'm using this because I like the tip. So now you can see I have a nice point, which I didn't have before. And it's, it's damp, but it's not really wet. And I just want it damp. I don't really want it wet. So we're going to use the Daffodil Delight and color our little yellow bird. Put down a coat of the yellow pencil. And when you do small images like this, it's good to have a pretty sharp um, pencil lead. Now I'm going to come in with the second coat with the pencil just to make it a little darker. And then the beak is going to be the early espresso. And that I'm going to hit with my blender pen wherever it got off to just to soften it up a little bit. And wipe off my pen. And now that's ready to go on the inside. So we're going to bring in one of the images of our little bird house. And we're going to start with the early espresso. And let me bring my card over here so we can use it as a pattern. We're going to do the little bird house and that's going to be early espresso so we're just going to put a light coat of early espresso on there then we're going to come in with our blender pen and I haven't added any water to it so it's still pretty dry and that's that's fine with me And then while it's still wet, I'm going to come back in with my pencil and do like the circle marks. Okay, so it's okay with me that it's the wood is not a perfect um, straight 
color because wood is has different shadings in it anyway so that's perfectly fine now I'm going to do the black down here at the bottom just a little bit of black and then I'm probably should clean my brush off and get that wet then I'm going to come back in with my black pencil I decided to bring in my camera so you could um, see a little better what I'm doing okay so now I have my black and when I'm happy with that I'm going to move ahead and do the roof which is going to be rich razzleberry Now I'm going to just dampen it here with my pencil, with my um, aqua painter. I'm going to do one side at a time so that it doesn't dry. Now on the, this part here is going to be Pacific Point. I'll put my first coat down of that and bring in my water just dampen it and come back and make it a little more okay we're ready to move on well no we're not we need to do the little hole is going to be gray sorry Okay, now we're ready to move on. I'm going to clean off my pencil, my blender pen. I get a little wet again. Now we're going to do the little bird, which is going to be yellow. And the beak is going to be um, early espresso. And again, I'm going to use my blender pen for that. We're ready to do some of our flowers. Um, we're going to do the yellow ones first. So these little ones here, these four little ones, one, two, three, four, are going to be yellow. These three flowers here, one, two, three, are going to be rich razzleberry. I think I need to sharpen my pencil. Now this little flower here is also going to be rich razzleberry on the edges. Let me clean my brush off and then this center is going to be yellow, Daffodil Delight. And then this flower here, this large flower, is going to be Calypso Coral. You can see this one right here. The little uh, berries inside are going to be Pacific Point. And for those I'm going to use my blender pen, clean it off. Okay, these three flowers here, one, two, three, are going to be a combination of Calypso Coral and Rich Razzleberry. So we're going to go ahead and start with Calypso Coral. Okay. 
Now there is a tiny little blueberry right there, so we're going to grab that while we're at it. Add some water. My tip is needs to be made a little straighter. Come back in with the Calypso Coral. And then we're going to wet it down here at the bottom and then add just a little bit of um, rich razzleberry, just like that. And we're just going to leave it like that. So we're going to do these two here the same way. Now we're ready to do our leaves and we're going to do Old Olive. Now there's three kinds of leaves. We want the leaves that are shaped like this to be more of a yellowy green. These leaves that are shaped like this are going to be strictly Old Olive and then this is going to be kind of gray and Old Olive, these leaves right here. So I'm going to make sure I have a nice tip on my um, pencil. I'll start with the leaves that are like this. Now I'm going to add some yellow, lightly add some yellow. I'm going to come in with my um, uh, just a little bit of wet there and I'm going to blend these in. Okay, I think I blended them all in. Clean off my brush. I'm going to bring my old olive in again and this time I'm going to do these leaves right here. These like, like fern like leaves. I need to sharpen my pencil again. I'm going to hit these with some water and then a second coloring. And then lastly we're going to do these little leaves here but before we put our green down we're going to put a light coat of gray. Just a really light coat. And then we're going to put our green on top of that. We'll hit it with our water. We might come in and just fill in around the edges there. Okay, we are done with our image. All right, we're ready to put our card together. And so we'll bring in all of our stuff, all our goodies from our kit. Our happy birthday. Let's go ahead and put our happy birthday on our piece of um, rich razzleberry. And I'll be using a piece of the waxy strip from my mini glue dots to kind of help me place that in place. Looks like there's an eighth of an inch all around. Now we're going to, um, the valley facing us, we're going to fold our card and use our bone folder to crease our fold. And on the front, now this is uh, going to be a little tricky here, but not too tricky. Uh, we're going to, uh, let's go ahead and make our our image here. So we're going to take the image that we just colored, put it on top of our Rich Razzleberry scallop circle in the center. And that's going to go on top of the Whisper White um, doily, delicate white doily. 
in the center. So now that will be ready to put on our card. Okay, so we're ready to do the, um, to put this on our card, to do our card base. So we have our pieces here. We know that this is going to be um, even on these three edges with about an eighth of an inch showing here on the right. So we'll go ahead and put that on. And then this is going to go on top of our Ritrazzleberry. We want a little more than a sixteenth of an inch here on the edge, but not an eighth. And then the white will be on the right. And then this is ready to go on our card front. And there's an eighth of an inch all the way around. And we want to make sure that this is on the right of our card base. Looks like an eighth of an inch. And we'll go ahead and put the inside sentiment on the inside. Now we have that and let's see, we're going to put this. Now this is going to go, um, bring this in. The edge is going to be even with the edge of the rich razzleberry and we want it about a half an inch. This, where the um, doily is, a half an inch from the top of the Whisper White. So we'll go ahead and put that on. You just want to make sure your little house is level. Now just a couple things left. We have our 10 inches of the organza ribbon. We're going to take it and make two loops like this. And we're going to cross this one over. So we have it crossed like that. Try to keep it flat. It's hard to do it and show and show you at the same time. So we'll make our loops cross over and then this loop we're going to push through the loop that we just made like that and pull it tight and you can adjust it before you pull it tight adjust it to the the width that you'd like and it's not a big bow so let's see and you can decide which side you like I like this side better so that's going to go there. Now we have this little um, embellishment, which I just think these are wonderful. So get a glue dot from your adhesive pack and put this down on top of a glue dot. And where you think you're going to put your ribbon, which will be alongside the purple next to the white, it's going to be on the purple, you'll put this about where you think that's going to be and you'll put it to the side kind of like that. You do want to cover this part up with the the part of the ribbon though. That might be a little bit too far away from the purple. I don't want to take that up because I know it will rip the 
doily. So I'm going to do this again. This time I'm going to put it right up against the purple there. That way I know that the bow is going to hide it like that. And then next to that, I guess it's best to go ahead and put the bow on. We're going to put the bow on with the glue dot. So um, put on the back, put a glue dot and pinch it. And then put the bow where you want it. Uh, about right there, I think. Maybe a little higher over here. There. I think that's good. There's really no right or wrong. I just want it to be pretty. And now we're ready to put our pearl on, which is our metal rimmed pearl. I'll take the back off. I'm using my paper piercer. My, I think this might be my favorite tool. I'm not sure. It's close if it's not. And I'm just going to set that right next to the leaf, but not on the leaf. And now I'm going to go ahead and trim those. And normally I trim it this way, but I think I'm going to trim it this way. Trim it up like that. Alrighty, we have our card. So this is card number four in my um, Your Inspiring flying home um, card class. Now this class kit will be available till um, April 30th, 2018. But if you're watching this after 2008, March, uh, April 30th, 2018, check out my website anyway, www.carolbcrafts.com to see what current class I will be offering. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for card number five. Bye now.